A growing group of advocates claim we made a huge mistake turning our backs on thorium, saying that it was abandoned because it wasn't good for making nuclear bombs, and that it's actually safer, more plentiful, and makes less waste than conventional nuclear plants using uranium. But how much of that is actually true? Let's dig a little deeper beyond the surface hype and find out what's really going on. Welcome everyone, my name is Michael, and if you're not sure what thorium is and how it compares to traditional uranium used in nuclear reactors, I put a link down in the description, but here's a quick recap. Thorium, like uranium, can be used in nuclear reactors to generate energy, that then typically spins a steam turbine and a generator to make electricity. From a practical, high-level perspective, the two are very similar and there's very little difference. The details are in the nuclear physics. Very simply, uranium undergoes the fission chain reaction directly. A uranium atom is struck by a neutron and fissions, releasing energy and additional neutrons that go on to strike other uranium atoms. Thorium, however, doesn't directly fission when it is struck by a neutron. Instead, it absorbs the neutron and converts itself into a uranium atom. Then when this new uranium atom is struck by a second neutron, it fissions and releases heat. This conversion process allows much more of the thorium to be used, which means much less mining and much less waste, one of the biggest downsides of using nuclear energy in general. This sounds great, and proponents of thorium town it as just one of the many benefits, arguing thorium has been an underappreciated and ignored path of the nuclear industry for many years. The 1950s and 60s saw the US under substantial pressure from the international competition in the field of nuclear power. The UK got the first full-scale commercial nuclear power plant in 1956 at Calder Hall, and the Soviet Union anticipated it would have multiple plants generating thousands of megawatts from a variety of different designs. In order to stay competitive, the US Atomic Energy Commission kicked off the Power Demonstration Reactor Program, which provided government funding for private companies to make nuclear power a commercial reality. This included a variety of designs, including thorium, which in 1962 was loaded into the first cycle at Indian Point, a plant not too far north of New York City. However, the second core a year later abandoned thorium and was replaced with conventional uranium. But why? The answer was given in 1963 at the International Atomic Energy Agency's Conference on Operating Experience. When asked directly, can you tell me why you changed your plant over from a thorium to a uranium cycle? Is the reason purely economical, or did you expect trouble from the use of thorium? The reason is purely economical, and we did not expect to have any trouble with the thorium cycle. It is hoped that by the time the third core is installed, we will be down to a cost which is going to be comparable to some of our other plants. Ten years later, in 1973, a group of private companies was again looking at thorium reactors, and found that a demonstration plant using molten salts was worthwhile. But the technological uncertainties would need to be resolved and decision points reached that would permit development to proceed with the necessary confidence. Basically, they were unsure how well it would actually work and if it was worth the investment. The consortium also identified a number of factors which tend to limit further industrial involvement, such as commitments to existing designs, lack of investment in supplying thorium fuel, the overwhelming experience in operating existing designs, which was comparatively lacking to thorium liquid salt designs, and the less advanced state of these new designs, and lack of clear solutions to known major technical challenges. So there were a number of significant technical and financial uncertainties, with no clear answers available which made proceeding very risky. But what about bombs? While thorium reactors generate essentially zero plutonium, the material of choice for most nuclear weapons, they do excel in making another, tritium, particularly if they're using molten salt fuels. Thorium reactors may not produce one specific type of weapons material, but they produce a lot of another. So, did development of thorium reactors stop because they couldn't make bombs? No. Like we saw with Indian Point abandoning thorium after one cycle and a consortium of eager private companies, it came down to the money. Thorium was more complex, had more technical challenges, and wasn't cost competitive compared to the uranium designs. So this one is busted. One of the main interests in thorium from the beginning was the fact that people were worried about the available supplies of uranium running out if a whole bunch of big new nuclear reactors were built. Adding thorium as a fuel source could diversify the supply, and even better since there should be more thorium available to mine compared to uranium. On average, there is about three times the amount of thorium in the Earth's crust compared to uranium. So in the strict technical sense, this is confirmed. 
However, we need to look beyond just the average numbers. Like uranium, thorium is not evenly distributed around the world. That means it's not useful if it's difficult or impossible to mine. In the case of thorium, it is not really extracted on a commercial scale, but more as a byproduct of other rare earth element recoveries. Because thorium is not the primary target of mining on a large scale, estimates of available thorium reserves are difficult to quantify. Nonetheless, despite the fuzzy numbers, the NEA and the IEA have estimated the world's economically mineable thorium reserves to be around 6.3 million tons, which is only slightly more than the much better known uranium reserves at 6.1 million tons. These figures are normally given on the low side, which in the case of thorium means that further exploration or improvements in mining, the material could increase further. Still, even doubling the available fuel for nuclear fission reactors using both uranium and thorium presents a pretty big advantage. One alternative and potentially useful source of uranium and thorium is in the oceans, where the dissolved elements can be filtered from the water. In the oceans, however, uranium is much more concentrated. There is about 82,000 times more uranium than thorium, or about 4.6 billion tons of it compared to only 56,000 tons of thorium. At this time, ocean extraction is not competitive to mining on land, but there is always the possibility that that may change in the future. So this one, in the strictest sense, is confirmed. There is, on average, three times the thorium available for mining on land. But there isn't three times the amount that is known for economical extraction, at least not without further exploration for deposits. This really depends on two things. First, what is considered safe, and second, what elements make up the nuclear waste. Nuclear waste, particularly spent nuclear fuel, is dangerous when it is first removed from the reactor because it is highly radioactive, giving off various radiation that requires it to be covered or buried to protect it from people in the environment. Over time though, the radioactivity declines until eventually it is about the same level as it was when we dug it out of the ground. This is a good way to define whether it is safe, when it reaches the same level of radioactivity as it was when we mined it out of the earth. The length of time it takes for nuclear waste to return to this though depends on the amount and types of elements in the waste. Some become less radioactive more quickly, within a few minutes or hours or days. Others take 10, 100, or thousands of years. Uranium and thorium fuel will create different waste products, which means they will behave differently. Under ideal conditions, thorium creates fewer of the very long-lived radioactive waste products compared to uranium. These are the elements that stay radioactive for tens of thousands of years. Since thorium creates less of these elements, it substantially reduces the amount of waste and length of time that the waste from thorium is dangerous. It also means that thorium waste can be about 10 times less radioactive when it comes out of the reactor. All this makes it much easier to store and handle compared to traditional uranium waste. However, after about 10,000 years, the radioactivity levels of both uranium and thorium are actually about the same. But for times less than 10,000 years, which is the time frame we are probably most concerned about, the thorium provides a significant waste advantage. It is also unfair to say that this benefit is unique to thorium. The comparison works well for uranium waste from traditional reactors, like the majority that are operating today. But just like there are designs that have been demonstrated using thorium, there have also been designs demonstrated using uranium that are just as effective at essentially eliminating the very long-lived elements from the waste. One more thing to consider is that not all thorium reactor designs run purely on thorium. Many designs use thorium supplemented with uranium in order to ensure sufficient power can be generated. Under these conditions, the very long-lived waste products will still be generated by the uranium, essentially undoing any short-term waste advantage given by the thorium. So our myth is technically confirmed, but needs to be slightly modified as to not be so misleading. Waste from purely thorium reactors is safer after 500 years compared to traditional uranium reactors, since similarly advanced uranium reactors achieve the same thing, and after 10,000 years it's all about the same anyways. Most nuclear weapons are created by either uranium or plutonium. The first bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan was a uranium design, and the second on Nagasaki was a plutonium design, which ended up being the preferred material. As a uranium reactor runs, it produces plutonium as a byproduct of its operation. This plutonium is naturally consumed while the reactor runs and actually helps the plant produce more energy. It is also possible to take the fuel and separate out the plutonium in a very pure form and reuse it in the reactor. It is also possible that the plutonium could be used to make a nuclear weapon. That's what's called nuclear proliferation and it is to be avoided. In a pure thorium design, due to the nuclear physics, it is essentially impossible to generate any meaningful plutonium. However, thorium reactors work first by converting the thorium into uranium, and then using that uranium as the actual energy source. Just like it was possible to separate out the plutonium, it is possible to pull out the relatively pure, freshly converted uranium from a thorium reactor. 
This is not a bug, but actually a feature. A number of the thorium reactor designs rely on this uranium extraction method to operate efficiently, separating out the uranium and then reinserting it into the reactor to make more energy. The fact that plutonium is typically used in weapons is more historical than anything, mostly because of the uranium-plutonium route that was followed first. In 1966, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, one of the early nuclear weapons facilities in the US, stated, Uranium-233 has been shown to be highly satisfactory as a weapons material, and if the existing weapons designs were based on uranium-233, Lawrence Radiation Laboratory would have no interest in switching to plutonium. Meaning the only reason that they are using plutonium for weapons is because they were developed first. To emphasize this point, in 1955, the US successfully set off an experimental uranium-233 bomb as part of Operation Teapot. The test was generally a success, but not pursued any further. It's not that thorium reactors can't make materials for bombs, quite the opposite. It's just that there is less experience and no desire to go back and develop new ones, which could be expensive and politically questionable. So this one is busted. Safety is always at the top of the list when it comes to nuclear plants. Previous accidents at Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima have demonstrated the need for proper design and safe operations. While today's operating nuclear plants have a very good safety record, most rely on complex safety systems and operators to take actions at the right time. There are certain things that can be done to improve this, such as passive safety systems that don't require the operators to do anything. Thorium reactors are often designed using liquid fuel that is pumped through the reactor. Liquid fuels offer more efficient energy extraction, improved heat transfer, and perhaps most importantly, can be operated at low pressures, close to the pressure you might find in your kitchen faucet, compared to the upwards 150 times the atmospheric pressure routinely used in traditional reactors. This means the heavy and expensive piping and reactor vessels are much simpler to manufacture and construct. It also means that if there's a leak, reactive steam won't explode outward because the liquid fuel is operating at a much more manageable pressure. Liquid thorium reactors can also be designed in such a way that if the temperatures get too hot or power is lost, a simple drain plug will melt, causing the normally liquid fuel to literally drain out of the reactor and disperse into tanks where it can be passively cooled indefinitely. This requires no operator action and allows the design to be inherently safe through simple physics. Another feature is that the volatile fission product gases can be pulled out online and contained separately, meaning there is much less buildup of dangerous radioactive material that could be released. The only problem with these features, better fuel utilization, improved heat transfer, low pressure, automatic drain plugs, and separating out fission products, is these are not unique to thorium reactors, but features of a design for molten salt reactors. And molten salt reactors can be just as easily fueled by uranium and get the same benefits. Because many thorium reactor designs are also molten salt reactor designs, proponents tend to mix the benefits. This doesn't mean that it isn't true, it just means that the benefits might be coming from the advanced reactor design, not the fact that it is using thorium. So on its own, this one is busted. There's a lot of misleading information surrounding thorium, which is a shame because it does have a number of real benefits, like expanding the potential sources of fuel that can be used. And in countries like India that don't have a lot of natural uranium, but a whole bunch of thorium, it looks like it could be a long-term solution. So check out this video to find out what's really happening with thorium and changing the way we think about nuclear. Subscribe if you want to get more content like this, and thanks for watching.